This week, guys, I'm talking about something a little bit topical um, and you know, a little bit, a little bit frustrating. It's uh, herd immunity. You guys might have heard of it. Oh, I did hear uh, quite a bit about it that. at the beginning of lockdown. Yeah. Didn't we try that out at some point this year? Well, I think we're about to try it out at some point soon. I'm not really sure what the oh, government's good. doing. I've been yeah, burying good. my head in the sand. But herd immunity, um, if you guys don't know what it is, it's um, a pretty important concept when it comes to um, sort of epidemics and in this case, pandemics. Um, mm. The idea essentially is that only a portion of the population needs to be immune to um, a virus to, you know, um, avoid large-scale outbreaks yeah so if someone can get the virus and transmit it to on average if less than one person then you'll have some kind of herd immunity yeah uh, for example you've got um measles okay measles so oh yeah yeah so for measles uh, the herd immunity threshold is about 95 percent, which means about 95 percent of people need to have been exposed and have an immunity to measles mm. um in order for um, the remaining 5% to be safe. And this is really important, obviously, because um, the thing is, not everyone can be infected um, or vaccinated and be okay. Obviously, yeah. there are people who are more susceptible to certain viruses, more vulnerable people. So we don't want... Um, if, it, if it was just a case of... Um, <laughs> if it was just a case of getting everyone infected and having everyone just be immune to the virus and getting it all over with, mm. that, that would be one thing. But there is a death rate and there are also people who are more susceptible so yeah. we can't exactly do that. But um, the thing is that herd immunity, you might have heard uh, that there's a bit of a, a bit of a debate here um, going on uh, against whether herd immunity is a good strategy mm. uh, for countries to take or not. What do you guys think? Is herd immunity, is isn't, it? Isn't it the strategy that's being taken in Sweden? Uh, Sweden, well, this, this is the thing. If you look at Sweden, actually, the, the, the death rates um, are higher than in sorry the infection rates are actually quite quite a lot higher than in but other they're countries. lower than ours yes the death rates are lower than ours yeah but then um similarly sized countries um yeah and, yeah sure uh, well similarly sized countries that uh, actually took uh proper action against it if you if you you know what i mean like you can't really compare the uk and us to any other country because we've been doing a really poor job but <laughs> true <laughs> <laughs> no, but, obvi- but what i mean is that like at least we've done some kind of lockdown measure mm. and a country that hasn't done any kind of lockdown measure is doing better than us yeah that is like just mind-bogglingly ridiculous that's true there are other factors going on with sweden as well but i i, I don't have all of the data on sweden right now so i'm gonna okay. table that one for now but the all idea right. is that effectively um some countries um our country is saying that herd immunity is the way that we want to go forward mm. we want to get enough people um infected with the vi- infected by the virus and immune to the virus such that um it won't spread and to be honest if you think about it that seems like a fairly a good idea on the face of it doesn't it you know, just get some people infected, then we don't need to worry no. about locking down and ruining the economy. I think, I think it scares most people because they're like, oh, the government wants to let us get the virus. Yeah. 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 Uh, or maybe... Well, you know, it, it assumes that part of your population is expendable, um, which is, you know, when you are dealing with sort of government policy, you've got to make this really difficult choice between, like some people are not going to make it and and the government's policy, if they're using herd immunity, is that it's okay that we don't try and save people who would otherwise be lost um, in the pursuit of sort of getting back to normal as quickly as possible with mm. with the economy and with lifestyle. Uh, it's not something I necessarily t- completely agree with, but it, it would it would probably work. Um, what? Well, but you say that, but deaths. you don't you don't know that because it, it, the thing is, it probably wouldn't work. Um, uh, really? Well, this is the thing. Uh, so the, the thing about herd immunity, what, I've, I've, what I'm trying to say is that you can, uh, you can have it come about through vaccination or through infection. Um, generally we do it through vaccination. We get enough people vaccinated against diseases such that the diseases can't spread because if someone gets infected, then they can't transmit it. But that's the mm. key point. You need to not be able to transmit it. We don't right, know yeah. yet if, um, having like having been infected with it already will lower that transmission rate enough such that you will not transmit it to someone else, if that makes this sense. This is fascinating because this is like, we're taught in school, in biology, we're taught such a basic view of immunity, which is once you've had a virus, you can't get it again. You're now immune. Yeah. And that's <laughs> not accurate at all. No. Like it's no. different for different viruses. It's well, di- some, it's some things can people. wear off as well. So you can, yeah. immunity can kind of wear off over time. But the, 
the simplest way to look at it is the R value. So you want the R value to basically be um, below one. You might have heard about the R value. Yeah, do you, do you have mm -hmm. any idea what it is? It's the R value is, um, how do I word this? It's like per person who gets the virus, how many people they pass it on to. Yeah, basically yeah. It's, the, it's the sort of average transmission rate of the virus. So you want that to be below one. So effectively, on average, if someone's being, if someone, if someone is infected with it, they will uh, pass it on to less than one person, which is good. Which is good. Yes. Yeah. If you've got like a high R rate, then that means that if say if you've got an R rate of say like let's say six, mm -hmm. you've got one person being infected, they're likely to go on then to infect six people. Yes. Which is bad. Wasn't coronavirus <laughs> like twelve bad. at some point? I, honestly, I, something I'm, really high. The, so the R number has been changing quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's due to sort of like uh, sort of the intervention, um, the tra the transmissible infections, all of these things. It's it's a really you can have a really simple. Um, you, you might have seen some really simple equations for it, mm. but the simplified equations don't actually take into account a lot of different things. So, exam for example, people who could be super spreaders who mm. um, who will you know interact with a lot of people um, in the course of their lifestyle just sneezing everywhere exactly yeah. um or uh, you know a certain air a certain areas um so you can have an r number for the whole uk but you could have a different r number for a specific area of the uk and the fact is that it, it doesn't take into account um necessarily specific areas and yeah. how they operate is that why we're doing like little localized lockdowns at the moment yeah because some cities have yeah higher and, r numbers yeah and some it, it, basically the lifestyles in certain cities are going to change are going to change how many people be infected if you've got if you've got in, in say one city where people um clump together on public transport mm. a lot and um tend to interact with a lot of other individuals per day you're gonna have, probably have higher rates of transmission yeah because there's more chances to interact with people who don't have the who don't have the virus but yeah so the, the idea here is that apparently um we uh the the uh the numbers for coronavirus um the sort of uh individual immunity needed and the um the number of people to be infected uh is about 60 to 70 percent supposedly mm -hmm. but uh herd immunity so far in the world has only ever been achieved by vaccination so right. yeah if we're if we want to if we want to give people herd immunity by getting them infected that would be sort of the first time in history that we've done that mm. apparently well, and, it was the first time for everything. Yeah, but vaccinations... I mean, no, let's not risk that. <laughs> yeah, vaccinations have a much lower death rate, yeah. so getting yeah. to that number, you're not sacrificing a bunch of people. Yes. Uh, but there are some issues with it. One, obviously, collateral damage. People would die um, uh, in the process of doing it. Mm. But also, um, you, you can't 100% you can't guarantee that, um, that he, one person being immune is going to cause herd immunity because, as I've said a few times, just to hammer it home the immune response that you mm -hmm. have um, to the virus needs to be um, needs to be enough such that you absolutely cannot transmit it. Mm. So what could happen, for example, is you could get the virus, you could develop an immune response to it. So you've got, you've had, co you've had coronavirus, you've gotten over it and you're all good, mm -hmm. right? What would normally happen is if the virus comes into contact with you again, yep. your body's like, hey, I remember this guy. Yeah. Let's get him. You no. know? Let's <laughs> stop you right there. You <laughs> can't come in. <laughs> your body just starts wailing on it. It's like, I know your weak spots, bro. <laughs> but the thing is that like generally that's that would mean that you don't get you don't get infected at all, you don't transmit it. But what could happen is a situation wherein your body is like, okay, I, I know what you're I know what I'm doing with you, and it starts beating it up. Mm. But it, it the the coronavirus basically kind of gets in there enough such that it, you can pass it on to someone else. Yeah. And we don't really you know, we don't know that uh, we can't sort of, um, we can't, we don't know if that's, if that's the case. Mm -hmm. So we don't have enough data to n fully know whether herd immunity will actually work. And the general scientific consensus right now is that it won't work. Um, a lot of people, a lot of the sort of scientists that are coming out and saying, oh, herd immunity will work, are mm -hmm. going against the scientific consensus. They're using a lot of sort of, eh, not very great science to back them up. Yeah. So be careful for be careful where you're looking for this information because you might see a lot in the media of um those two sides being pitted against each other as equals mm -hmm. um as though it's scientific discourse that's just how it works that's not what's going on here <laughs> there is one side that is sort of really backed up by science and there's the other one that's kind of like hey we just want to get back uh, we just we just need scientists to say that it's okay to get back to you know get back to normal Let's keep the money churning exactly yeah, that's that. So just to just to reiterate, uh, final point here is that we don't actually know whether um, being you know a natural immunity to coronavirus um, will stop transmission. So until we know that, um, we can't 
rely on herd immunity as a defense. I just, I just want every, I, I do want everything to go back to normal, but we need to do it in the safest way possible that will result in the least amount of deaths. Ideally, that'd be good. See, I, yeah. I kind of feel differently. I don't, I don't necessarily, I want things to go back to us being able to be free to do what we like, but I also think that there's some incredible um, lessons to be learned from this entire yeah. process and um and 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 the realization that even things like for example just the flu season we have every year uh, i i hope that um some le some measures like for example it being normal in in some countries in asia to wear face masks if you have a cough or a cold um might stay because ultimately when our governments are so focused on the economy um the the economic impact of people taking sick days and from and the passing on of illnesses is probably much larger than we've ever taken into account in terms of our yeah. actual mm. policies um and i think it would be great if we can try to have some measures continually that reduce the spread of infections because then they'll yeah. they might die out what i think might happen actually yeah one thing one change i think would be very cool is because we've uh, a lot of people that have been able to uh, have moved towards remote working mm. that that'll be a much more common thing and if you are feeling a little bit under the weather um instead of coming into coming in and wearing mm. a face mask they just say just do your work from home yeah if you're able to work mm. do it from home and if you be, oh, if it's amazing yeah. until, at, at, at such a time where you're unable to work then you take you take yeah. your time off that way no one is coming in uh, forcing themselves to go into work while and oh, I can't afford another day off, you and, know? That's the thing. and hopefully the government uh, brings out better uh, support for people who can't go in because having worked in uh, having worked in bars and in food service, mm. uh, in, in all of these places, you get at the start of at the start of your um, at the start of your job, you get told, okay, here are the rules: no coming in when you're sick; it's against the law. Mm. Blah blah blah. If you've if you've if you've thrown up or if you've had if you've had a, a sore tummy, um, you're not allowed. <laughs> you've got to take 24 hours before handling food. Um, after your symptoms have stopped, um, and if you were to go to your man your manager in your bar, oh, they'd say, be like, "I don't care." Yeah, if you go to your manager in bar, mm. say, "Hey, I'm I've been vomiting uh, for the for the past three days. Uh, can I have a day off work?" They're like, "No, we need you. Unless you can find someone else to cover your shift, you're you're going in. Just vomit in the toilet and take the food out." <laughs> that is bleak. <laughs> yeah, no, but most places don't. They genuinely don't care because there is no support for businesses yeah. when people are ill. Mm. There's no support for workers uh, when they're ill if they're working in sort of bars and things like that. Yeah. So hopefully that's one thing that the government will implement a better support um, and better sick pay such yeah. that people can take time off when they need to. If you enjoyed that clip, head over to patreon.com forward slash sci guys where you can find the full show. Or you can stay here and catch up on old Sci Guys episodes. Or you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Sci Guys Pod to find out when we're doing more live shows.